So last night, Donald Trump was part of a town hall meeting with a number of Latino voters who, who are probably on the fence. Like the guy you see here on this screen, he, well, he'll tell you that he was, he's a Republican, but not registered. And so he was there to answer some questions. Uh, I guess he asked them to the best of his, of his ability. Now, <clears throat> something I noticed now lately this year, I can say that I've probably watched more debates, more town halls and more interviews with presidential candidates and, and Senator candidates, candidate candidates too, than I probably have in my whole entire life. And it's all because probably for the first time in forever, you have a next, a former president and the current president slash current vice president running against each other for the office for 2025. And so you have a, a sample size of Trump. You have a sample size of uh, Kamala Harris, although people try to say she's a vice president, but so she don't really have any pull as more of uh, Biden. But Biden has said, and she has admitted too, that she was there for most of the for the policies, most of the laws or the votes or the things that had to be voted on. She was like, the, she was the deciding vote. So she was there. She's in the, she was in the midst of it all. Although she was, seemed like she was in the basement majority of the time. And then they just let her out to give her some water, cast the vote. Then they put it back in the basement. However you feel they, they did it. That's, that's what happens. So, like I said, this year, I probably watched more of those than I've ever done in my life. And what you notice is about politicians is when they do these spots, one, everything is timed. Uh, when they're in the debate, they have a minute, minute and a half, three minutes, what have you, to give an answer. When they do interviews, Kamala Harris, uh, even uh, Donald Trump, Joe Biden, whoever, they're only there for 30 minutes. So the the person asking the question has got to ask a question. Uh, hopefully you can get a straight answer and go on to the next question. So they have a number of questions they want to ask, but you only have enough time for a few. That's why I like the guy that uh, interviewed Kamala Harris the other day on, on Fox. He had a bunch of papers in his hand because it's like, you know, this is what's important. These are, these are the questions you want to ask. These are the topics that you want to cover, but we're going to go in this order. If we can get to these topics, then you go to that page. If not, we'll come back to this page. So that's how it is. So they only have 30 minutes. So when you see them over talking each other, when you see them rushing through the questions and in, in the comments, it's because they only have a, a, a certain amount of time, which is why at first I was kind of like not feeling, I was feeling some type of way about the guy at Fox and the way he was doing Kamala Harris. But then I realized at the end, he was saying like, look, they're trying to push me to hurt me in to finish. So I got to get to this point. I got to get to this question. He's trying to hurt me get to the question. And Kamala Harris is doing a lot of word salad, a lot of explaining. And so that frustrates us because we don't understand it. And because we want to hear, we want you to, we want you to answer the question. So if you're a fan of Kamala Harris, you want the interviewer to give her time to say what she has to say. If you are a fan of Donald Trump, you want the same thing. On the other side, if you're not a fan of these two, first thing we're going to say is you don't worry, Sally. Just answer the questions. But that's not what politicians do. Politicians have answers already ready. They want to say a point. They don't want to hurt nobody's feelings because they don't want to lose nobody's votes. And so they're taking a chance there. But then they want to make sure to put a dig in on their opponent. And that's how politics goes out in public. So with that being said, so if you ever confused or trying to feel some type of way about a certain candidate, this is why you have to go past what's on TV because TV is only, only a small snippet and you have to go like to their, like the websites, look at their policies, look at the history of things that they voted for, things that they voted against, see what they plan on doing in the future, see if it contradicts anything that they have said or done in the past, and then you go make your choice on election day or election month because, like I told you, you need to go vote early 
so you won't be in them long lines with everybody <clears throat> wondering why they can't give you food and water when you sit in line for four five six hours when you could have easily voted two three weeks before the election but anyway with that being said cnn made a comment on this on this young man's or well, this man this fellow's question last night but so i want to i want you to see what cnn how cnn covered this question and then we're going to go to the actual town hall and see actually what was said okay so let's begin here i want to give you the opportunity to try to uh win back um my vote okay um your um and say action and maybe inaction during your presidency and the last few years um sort of you know was a little disturbing to me you know what uh happened during january 6 um and the fact that you know you waited so long to take action while your supporters were attacking the capitol and also people in your administration who don't support you i'm curious how people so close to you and your administration no longer want to support you so why would i want to support you the people that don't support a very small portion. That was a day of love from the standpoint of the millions. It's like hundreds of thousands. It could have been the largest group I've ever spoken before. Well, his reaction was a whole meme. You saw the, you saw the head flop, right? I'm, I'm going to tell you what the head flop was for. No, let me, let me not get her. Keep up reading it. Okay. So, you know, the head flop was yes he didn't get the answer that he wanted but i believe the brother was <clears throat> nervous getting up there talking you kind of tell the deep breaths he was taking the way he was talking his demeanor his body language and so then when trump said something that made no sense at all when he said to him he said it was a, a day of love then it's like it's like a defeatist you know body movement like oh man i can't believe he's just saying it. i said basically what you just said did not win back my vote so cnn is going to go all in on this into it but i think i know exactly what that head flop meant joining me now democratic strategist maria cardona editor of the national review ramesh panuru former white house deputy press secretary of the trump administration sarah matthews who has endorsed kamala harris for president okay first of all maria what did this mean the head flop about, I mean, what, I mean, I almost hurt my neck, but, uh, but what did it mean to you? <laughs> that uh, he didn't get it done. Clearly mm. he did not get it done. That was not a satisfactory answer. Not for that Latino gentleman. I don't think for any American who really understands. Oh, you see, Kamala gonna have a town hall next week. And the danger that Donald Trump still poses. I mean, a day of love is yes. an odd thing to it, have said. It, it is a very odd thing to have said. I think Donald Trump's problem is is that he is getting old. That he is old and getting older. I think he fumbles over his words. Again, you have a certain amount of time to answer questions. So he's trying to answer as quick as possible, as being as truthful as possible. You know he's not gonna say things that that you that you that he cares if you care about he's going to say what he want to say how he want to say it that's just the type of person he is but again he's want to, he wants to get to his point matter of fact let, let, let me let me go back let me go ahead and go to like i said i'm going to uh, go ahead and go to the town hall meeting i'm sure it's going to Ella ha sido muchas cosas, fiscal de distrito, fiscal general, vicepresidenta. La llamamos luchadora. Happened during January 6. Uh... Okay, let's see. Let me just rewind this a little bit. And it's, look at the whole context of the question. Good evening, Mr. Trump. Okay. Um, I am a uh, Republican, no longer registered, though. Um, I want to give you the opportunity to try to uh, win back um, my vote. Okay. Um, your um, say action and maybe inaction 
during your presidency and the last few years um, sort of, you know, was a little disturbing to me. You know, what uh, happened during January 6th. Um, Does he spray that on? Like, seriously, I know he's not in the sun all the time. I'm, I'm, I, this has to be sprayed on. Has no one told him? I, he, I think he got a lot of yes men that's on his squad because no one has told him that this is not the look. Not not this orange. And they've called this man orange for years. But I guess when you got the money he got, you don't care what nobody say. You're going to do what you want to. Um, and the fact that, you know, you waited so long to take action while your supporters were attacking the Capitol. Um, coronavirus, I thought we were, the public was misled during coronavirus and that more and many more lives could have been saved if we would have been informed better. Um, I don't even think the government was informed about <clears throat> what was going on or how to deal with it. Um, and also people in your administration who don't support you. I'm curious how people so close to you and your administration no longer want to support you. So why would I want to support you? Um, if you would answer these questions for me, I would really appreciate it and give you the opportunity. There's, you know, your own vice president doesn't want to support you now. Thank you, Amido. So uh, the people that don't support a very small portion, we have a tremendous, about 97% of the people in the administration support me. So if that's, if that's true, you know, it goes to the saying that most of the people you see online that do a lot of talking, most of the people that, that they promote are going to be the naysayers, the, the, the negative Nancy's, if you will, of in, of, on any context, any subject. <laughs> it, could be, it could be at work. You do a great job every day, all day. <clears throat> everybody praise you. Everybody approve, approve of what you do and how you do it. But then you have one person don't agree with you for whatever reason and they leave. Well, everybody's going to flock to that person because they're going to want to know why that person is not on your team. So when they say something now, it's like it's got it. It has to be true. But yet the man got people that still follow him, still still hang with him and still want him to run and still endorse him. So it can't. I don't know. Can't 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 all be that bad. But because it's me, somebody doesn't support, they get a little publicity. Uh, the vice president, I disagree with him on what he did. Uh, I totally disagreed with him on what he did. Uh, very importantly, you had uh, hundreds of thousands of people come to Washington. They didn't come because of me. They came because of the election. They thought the election was a rigged election, and that's why they came. Some of those people went down to the Capitol. I said, peacefully and patriotically. Not now, see, that's one of the parts. That that's always left out. He said peacefully and patriotically to go down there and protest on January on January six. Nothing done wrong at all. Nothing done wrong, and uh, action was taken. Strong action. Ashley Babbitt was killed. Nobody was killed. Uh, there <laughs> <coughs> sorry. Did you see her face? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This can I go back? Hold on. Hold on. <coughs> Oh, man. Hold on. <clears throat> uh, very importantly, you had uh, hundreds of thousands of people come to Washington. They didn't come because of me. They came because of the election. They thought the election was a rigged election, and that's why they came. Some of those people went down to the Capitol. I said peacefully and patriotically, nothing done wrong at all, nothing done wrong. And uh, action was taken, strong action. Ashley Babbitt was killed. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it real quick. Just watch it. Watch it. He just said Ashley Babbitt was killed. Nobody was killed. Uh, there were no guns down. <laughs> now I see somebody like that. They can't. They can't. They they couldn't. They couldn't kick it with me. They couldn't hang with me because I would do the same thing, and then we would just be rolling and roasting for the rest of the night. We would have a whole crowd <clears throat> acting a fool because I'm gonna say something. She just looked, but I'm gonna be like. Hold on, what did he just say? And I'll be the next one to stand up and raise my hand and say, you just said that, that somebody was deleted, but then you said nobody was deleted. But <clears throat> hold on, let, let me let him finish his answer. And there, we didn't have guns. The others had guns, but we didn't have guns. And uh, what 
and when he said others, he means like the people who were in charge of the white, or the security and the police at the White House, which secured the same White House he was at like a few days, the day before. When I say we, these are people that walk down. This was a tiny percentage of the overall, which nobody sees and nobody nobody shows. And that's the thing about a riot or even a large gathering. I only say riot. I say like a large gathering is that you can have everybody come down and want to peacefully protest. Like some people say that the police let these folks in. Now, this is a problem. This is one of the small problems with the way America does uh, do enforces laws because you're really not, they're not supposed to do anything unless there's like an imminent threat to life. But how do you decipher what's an imminent threat to your life? If now I'm one of the people to say, if you had tens and hundreds of thousands of freedmen going up into the Capitol, I do believe more shots would have been fired because they would have been afraid for their life. But here you only had maybe like a couple but the rest of them were, you know, were, were, were like white people. And so they walk in and actually people are supposed to be allowed to come into the white house. Now, I don't know about jumping fences and jumping gates and climbing walls. Eh, that's a little extreme. I think something should have been done there for sure. Right. But you can't dictate and control what someone else is going to do. You can say, Hey, we're going to go down here and we're going to protest peacefully. We're going to storm the Capitol, you know, storm the castle, as they say. And but we're going to protest because you saw people walk in, walk through, yell, holler, scream, cuss, whatever. And then they walked out without doing any, you know, doing anything about it. I saw a video where they kind of, you know, tore up some television cameras and stuff. But the Ashley, the Ashley Babbitt issue. That story ran the wrong way because she should not have been shot period from the video that were actually taken by a journalist who was there right next to her she should not have been but the problem is she was in proximity what had happened what from if for those who don't know because people love to bring up this january 6th and the woman getting deleted in that little instance she and another guy was the first ones up to that door and they was actually joking and talking to and with the security that was there at the door even offered them water now this is a act these are this is actually on video you can see then you have some fools like i said you can't control everybody every time you can have a hundred thousand people that are going to be there peacefully protesting or whatever but then you're going to have some it's always going to be one maybe two it's always going to be one that's going to take it to a whole nother level and screw it up for everybody we say it in our community all the time but as you can see, it happens in all communities. You just have to pay attention to the world. When the window, where, where the police was named, Mr. Bird, uh, Sergeant Bird, the guy who actually, you know, shot her, where he was at, when that glass, the door was locked, and so you had some people trying to break down the door. Right then and there, there should have been a call to action. Get your get, get your get your guards, your security to get there. If you don't want to, if you don't want to uh use lethal force get you some bean bags or something tear gas tear gas or something in order to make sure that they you know to push them back i mean you you have to do something because now they're like if they're willing to break down doors there's no telling what they're willing to do so you so you have to you have to go with it but anyway the video shows that she the guy broke the window she grabbed that guy tried to pull now she not now she served in the military did a couple of couple of tours of duties for 14 years thanks nice to say she was in afghanistan was one of them so she was a patriot she was in the service she was not there to start a riot she actually offered the security guards or the police officers or whoever was in the, in the uh, white house offered them water and asked them were they all right when the guy broke the glass, she grabbed that guy, pulled him back, hit him in the face. She hit the guy who actually broke the who broke the glass in the face, turned around, and was deleted just like that. I mean, what do you take? I mean, what do you take from that? But then, the, but then the brother that actually shot her, 
He did an interview and said he felt it was an imminent threat. Could he figure out who was threatening who not? Probably not because it's a lot of people there at that door to glass, probably bamming and breaking glass all over. So he looks up. First thing he sees is someone standing there in the glass, like they're trying to right there through the open glass and shot her. And she was, she was a cowardly, but I blame that little crowd because you hear people saying he got a gun, he got a gun and they try to push back and go the other way. I mean, you're trying to be bad, but at the time when somebody pull that gun out, everybody trying to run, which is what people do. I mean, come on, that's what we're going to do. Anybody pull out a gun on me, I'm turning and I'm running. Come on. You're going to do the same thing. But someone would say it multiple times, he got a gun, he got a gun, he got a gun. And then next thing you know, bah, but it was so much yelling and hollering and noise, probably couldn't hear it. So, but that's part of the story that was, but so, oh, so those of you who are kind of wondering about the, that police, what's that, that, that immunity thing that Trump is trying to instill for the police, that would be an example or a case of when it would uh when it would happen and would it would be put in the law and be acted upon and he and he could walk away because he did his job which is what he did he did his job so don't also so that's the thing you can't have it one way but not like it the other way it's okay if one of them one of them folk delete a descendant of a freedman but then when it's a descendant of the freedmen doing it to one of them folk, you're quiet. You don't be quiet. As citizens, we should all stick together and feel the same way no matter what happens, no matter who it happens to and when and why. Like I said, we can't pick and choose when laws are enacted. But anyway, let, let, me, let, let, me, let me finish. But that was a day of love from the standpoint of the millions. It's like... That dude like, what? A day of love? He's like, man, you got to explain. So... His demeanor to me, he's just tired. He's tired and frustrated with the whole process, knowing we only got two candidates that we really, really wish we didn't have. Um, I think if anyone else but Trump would have ran for the Republicans, they probably would have won. If anyone but Biden and probably and probably uh, Kamala Harris too would have ran, would have ran, they probably would have won. But because of who we got now, like I said, this is why. I said, watch interviews, town halls, look at policies, go to the websites, all that stuff, because I want to see, because my bottom line right now is not who I like, because no, I don't believe Trump is going to put us back in chains. He didn't do it his first four years, not going to do it now. He could have did it then. They try to act like he want to be a dictator. Look, the dif difference between a U.S. president and a dictator, U.S. president can be removed. Uh, if, if enough people say something, and the right people say some a president can be removed so donald trump can't do too much outrageous before even his own people are gonna be like hey this man gotta go i'm sorry he done done too much yeah he might have done this done that me and you way ain't, on, ain't in the same party but we gotta agree that this guy gotta go if he was a dictator the only way you can get him out of there is somebody military go in take him out and then they put in somebody else hundreds of thousands it could have been the largest group i've ever spoken before they asked me to speak i went and i spoke but, but hold on Let me, I'm, I'm gonna rewind a little bit because i want y'all to kind of get the full context of what he's saying and like i say he, he's he's trying to say too much in a little bit of time so i think what he's trying he's trying to his mind is he's trying to get to a point that really i just don't like when politicians take digs at each other all the time just put just say what you going to do and how you're going to make the country better. And that's it. That's it. Some of those people went down to the Capitol. I said peacefully and patriotically, nothing done wrong at all. Nothing done wrong. And uh, action was taken, strong action. Ashley Babbitt was killed. Nobody was killed. Uh, there were no guns down there. We didn't have guns. The others had guns, but we didn't have guns. And uh, when I say we, these are people that walked down. This was a tiny percentage of the overall, which nobody sees and nobody nobody shows. But that was a day of love from the standpoint of the millions. It's like hundreds of thousands. It could have been the largest group I've ever spoken before. They he can never finish a sentence. I don't know why. He's like he's talking phrases. 
They asked me to speak. I went and I spoke. And I used the term peacefully and patriotically. If you look at the Democrats, what they say, you look at Maxine Waters and you look at Hillary Clinton and you look at what they say, and they don't put that on. They only put Republicans on. But they couldn't get me because of the fact that. Hey, you see that clock right there? So I guess it got like, what, three minutes, two or three minutes to uh, to give an answer. So he don't have all night. He can only he only has a certain amount of time to answer this, which is why, like I said, what is that? that a teleprompter? Is that a teleprompter? What is that? I can't see what this says. But anyway, yeah, he don't have all night. So but he's he's babbling because he's trying to hurry up and get to a certain point. I said everything's got to be peaceful and patriotic and We'll see how it all works out, but I think that we're gonna we're right now in another election. We want all I want is honest elections. I'm willing to take any chance. I want honest elections. So basically he's saying that he still don't believe he lost that last election. He just wanna make he said because he says he wants an honest election. But he really didn't answer the question of or stick to the topic of what the guy was asking about. January 6th and how he didn't, you know, really do too much, do, do anything. Once it was going on, he didn't get out and say, Hey, I need y'all to fall back. I need y'all to go on back home and get out of the white house. Don't, don't, don't damage. He did say peaceful, do have, make a peaceful protest. But again, you're going to have those who, you know, ain't paying who, who going to do what they want to do regardless. Just like the Antifa people during the George Floyd, uh, riots and stuff when black people were protesting peacefully and you had these antv had these little white girls you know breaking in the cheesecake factory man who eat cheesecake like that and walking out eating cheesecake or or like a pallet full of bricks sitting on the side of the road and these and these white folks is throwing stuff to these buildings and, and black people are like what you doing nobody asked you to do that you need to get on back out you no know, going back to where you from and you find out that those people from different cities being bust in by whatever organizations to turn the rise into something, maybe something violent. Cause all those folks get arrested, taken downtown, and none of them, none of them are from the city that they was arrested in. Because they're bust down to start mass confusion. We need borders and we need honest elections. And if we don't have either of those two things, that's it. We have tremendous loyalty to the Trump administration. Uh, Biden, when he lost in Afghanistan, when he there you go, had to bring in Biden, just like, hey, same thing. We get pissed off about Kamala doing. He's doing the same thing. It looks so bad. That's why Putin went into Ukraine, in my opinion. He looked and he saw. He should have fired every general involved in that. There was a disaster. He should have fired a lot of people because he had the most unsuccessful administration in the history of our country. A disaster. Acknowledged. I again had the best economy we've ever had. I rebuilt our military. I, I defeated ISIS. I did things that nobody thought in terms of medical right to try. I got right to try where you could use space age, uh, things that wouldn't be approved for another five or 10 years. You were able to use it and we saved thousands and thousands of lives. But 97% of the people in my administration supported me. When you fire somebody, they say bad things. When I fire a John Bolton or when I fire any of these people, he was terrible. But when I fire people, they go out and say, if I didn't fire people, they wouldn't say it. But you know what? Biden should have fired a lot of people because he had a very unsuccessful administration. And the first thing he sh the person he should have fired is his vice president because she's absolutely terrible. And I'll tell you, she's no way fit, in any way fit, to be the president of the United States. In fact, she turned on him and they had a coup. They took it over from a president that got 14 million votes. I'm no fan of his, but he got 14 million votes. He won the primary. She was out of the primary. She was the first one to quit and she left 22 people. She was the first one out. She never made it to Iowa. And then she comes back and they do a coup. They take it over from him. So that's the way it is. When people don't do their job, I fire them. And if they say bad things about me, that's okay. He made a good point that out of 22 people running for president, she was one of the first that was out of there. And then you blink twice, she's this close to becoming the president of the United States. I did a video that showed that a year ago, no one thought she was competent enough to even be, be vice president. 
that they wanted Joe Biden to get rid of her and to bring in another vice president for his second term. But then all of a sudden, and I think they knew he was on a decline mentally at the time, which is why I believe that they was trying to get him to get somebody else to be his running mate. But all of a sudden, a year later, she's the best candidate to be president. Like, really? I didn't I didn't understand that. I still don't. But with that being said, what they got to do with January 6th? OK, but overall, look, we're leading in the polls now. We have an election going on right now. I'm doing really well with Hispanics and uh, we're doing well pretty much with every group. When people don't do a job, I'm sorry, I get rid of them. And if they want to say bad things, I've never fired somebody that said wonderful things. Sometimes they think about it. But when you let somebody go, even for cause, and I only do for cause, they don't generally say great things. But Biden, never think of it, into the worst administration in the history of our country, he never fired one person. And Biden sounded like Jerry Jones. Shout out to my Cowboys, I'm a Cowboy for life. Born and raised, can't help it, that's where I'm from, so, <clears throat> but. I got to tell the truth of my peoples. And that's disgraceful. And you look at the border. The border has been a disaster. All they had to do is leave my border. I had the safest, most secure border. And people came in legally. I had the safest border in the history of our country. All he had to do is leave our people and leave our policies. I had to remain in Mexico policy, worked out with the Mexican government. The, uh, the head of Mexico, all of them, they were my friends. They were good. They were great people. It wasn't easy to work it out, but I worked it out. Remain in Mexico. It was an unbelievable success. Remain in Mexico. We check you out, and then we bring you into the country if you check out. Biden didn't do that. He got rid of everything. He had an open border policy where the whole world flowed in. Unfortunately, the world were prison populations. If I were running a country, any country, and I heard that the U.S. had an open border policy, the first thing I do is open up my jails, take all of my prisoners and let them out, murderers and everyone else. And that's essentially what they did. And it's a shame. So uh, it's, uh, we had the most success. See, he don't even remember what the, what, what the topic was. Like I say, politicians, they're gonna try to answer your question real quick. And then they're gonna use the majority of their time to speak on their, what they wanna speak on, talking against the other candidate and then talking about how great they're gonna be. But anyway, that's all I'm gonna do for this for this uh, town hall, for this video right now. I'm gonna uh, go over this, cause I watched some of it. <clears throat> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to watch the whole thing and uh, try to break it down. But hey, the the thing you have to understand, and I said it before, so let me uh, let me put make it, uh, conclude with this. It's policy, yeah, it's policy. None of your politicians are going to sound competent. None of them going to sound. I mean, I I've heard Trump talk many a time, and I'm like, God, this dude sounds like a like, like a like a football jock. But I've seen what he's done as president. I've seen it. I'm not really tripping on somebody if they talk crazy or how they talk. I want to know what they're going to do if it's going to help or hurt me. If it ain't going to hurt me too much well let's say if both of them gonna hurt then i'm gonna try to see who hurt the least you, you see what i'm saying it's you can't get everything you can't make everybody happy so both sides gotta gotta make a compromise but politics economics war the government should not be a popularity contest that went out in junior high and high school when you become an adult and you pay bills and you pay taxes and you want your neighborhoods to be safe. You want to be able to trust the police. You want to be able to trust the government to give you the resources, and allow you to have the resources to do what you need to become a productive member of society. Popularity means nothing. Popularity. Now, Trump could be racist, but we also know Donald Trump used to kick it with some known races, not Donald Trump, Joe Biden used to kick it with some known races that were in politics. If you got those in politics, if their racism carries over into the polit political realm to where, again, it's holding us back from getting and receiving things that we should have as human human beings and citizens of this country, you got to get them up out of there. But 
if the racism and the bigotry, which most people have, does nothing to hurt me, you can say what you want to behind closed doors because I guarantee, I'm, I'm sure you say anything. Because we all say something behind closed doors about other people. As long as your policies are in line with my policies, I'll rock with you on the political front if I'm a vote. But anyway, tell me what you think about this story. Leave your comments below. Share it with the world. Thank y'all for watching. Hey, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Those four things cost you nothing but maybe a couple of minutes out of your day, but they mean the world to us. Don't forget, if you want to uh, support monetarily, you can give super thanks, super chats, or go to the description box or links there you can click on. You can also go to MarlonMorelli.com. That's MarlonMorelli.com. Get 10% off your first purchase. Or go to the shop button below this video and get your products there. Have you do it. Hey, we appreciate it. We love you. We thank you. And with that being said, I leave you in peace. And I'll see you on the other side.